In this module, we will discuss the audio panel, radio tuning panel, interphone systems, public address system, call system, and the voice recorder. Let's begin with the audio panel. Three identical audio panels are located on the aisle stand. The left forward panel is for the captain, the right panel is for the first officer, and the aft panel is the first observers. The transmitter selectors select the radio or system used for transmission from that crew station. The receiver selectors are push-on, push-off switches which are rotated to adjust the volume of the receiver. Pushing a transmitter selector selects the desired transmitter. The mic indication is displayed. Selecting a transmitter also selects the respective receiver. The green receiver selected indicator does not illuminate. Only one transmitter can be selected at a time. Selecting a different transmitter cancels the previous transmitter. You can transmit with the boom microphone or oxygen mask microphone using the mic position of the control column push to talk switch. The radio transmit RT position of the switch on the audio panel and the push to talk PTT button on the glare shield may also be utilized. Or use the hand microphone. The hand microphone has an integral push to talk switch. When a receiver is manually selected, the receiver selected indicator light illuminates. Any number of receivers can be selected at one time. Once selected, the volume is adjusted by rotating the switch. Receivers are monitored using a headset or speakers. When the speaker is selected, the green indicator illuminates. The volume is adjusted by rotating the switch. The speakers are located to the side of the captain and first officer. Question. Answer B is correct. Controls to monitor navigation equipment audio are also located on the audio panel. The VOR ADF selector is used to select the left or right VOR or ADF. The receiver selector allows the nav aid to be monitored. The approach selector is used to select the left, center, or right approach receiver or the marker beacon. The receiver selector allows the selected approach receiver or marker beacon to be monitored. A navigation filter selector allows monitoring. V, voice only information. R, receiver identifier only information or B, both voice and identifier information from the selected navigation receiver. Question. Answer B is correct. Now let's look at a failed audio panel. If the captain's or first officer's audio panel fails, the first observer's audio panel can be used. The observer's audio system switch is located on the overhead panel. 
Selecting the captain or first officer transfers all functions to the first observer's audio panel. The push to talk switch on the captain's audio panel remains active. Let's discuss the radio tuning panel. Three radio tuning panels are located on the aisle stand, designated left, center, and right. There are three VHF radios, designated left, center, and right. There are two HF radios, designated left and right. Any radio tuning panel may be connected to any of the VHF or HF radios. The VHF radios will be discussed first. The antennas for the right and center VHF radios are on the bottom of the airplane. The antenna for the left VHF radio is on the top of the airplane. Pushing a radio selector switch selects the left, right, or center VHF transceiver. A white bar illuminates to indicate the selected radio. The HF antenna is located in the vertical stabilizer. Pushing a radio selector switch selects the left or right HF transceiver. A white bar illuminates to indicate the selected radio. Each HF has the capability of transmitting an amplitude modulation, AM, or upper sideband. If AM is selected, a white bar illuminates. If upper sideband is selected, the white bar on the AM switch is extinguished. Upper sideband transmission allows communication over greater distances. Each HF radio also has a sensitivity control. The HF sensitivity control on the left radio tuning panel adjusts the left HF sensitivity. The HF sensitivity control on the right radio tuning panel adjusts the right HF sensitivity when a right HF radio is installed. The center radio tuning panel HF sensitivity control is inoperative because there is no center HF radio. Question. Answer C is correct. The frequency selectors are used to select the VHF or HF frequency. Rotating the selector changes the standby frequency. Pushing the frequency transfer switch transfers the standby frequency to the active frequency and the active to the standby frequency. Normally, VHF left or HF left will be selected on the left radio tuning panel. VHF center will be selected on the center radio tuning panel, and VHF right or HF right will be selected on the right radio tuning panel. The offside tuning feature allows the tuning of the communication radios from any radio tuning panel. An offside tuning indicator is located on each radio tuning panel. It indicates an offside radio has been selected. For example, if the right panel is used to select the left VHF, both the right and left panels offside tuning indicators will illuminate. The left panel's offside tuning indicator illuminates because a radio normally tuned only by the left panel has been selected for tuning by another panel. The right panel's offside tuning indicator illuminates because a radio not normally tuned by the right panel has been selected. 
Selecting VHF left on the right radio tuning panel will also display the left VHF frequencies on the active and standby windows of the right radio tuning panel. Question. Answer B is correct. If a radio tuning panel fails, pressing the off switch disconnects the panel from the radios. This ensures all radios can be selected by other radio tuning panels. HF sensitivity can still be adjusted. Now let's discuss the interphone systems. The interphone systems on the 747-400 are the flight interphone, service interphone, upper deck, and the cargo interphone. Let's begin with the flight interphone. The flight interphone is for flight deck intercommunication. There is also a flight interphone jack in the nose wheel area. The flight interphone is used by pressing either push to talk switch to interphone or by selecting the flight transmitter selector and using the RT or mic position of a push to talk switch. Or you can use the hand microphone. Now let's discuss the service, cargo, and upper deck interphones. The service interphone provides communication between numerous service jacks located throughout the airplane. The cargo interphone provides communication between loading personnel. The upper deck interphone provides communication between the flight deck and the upper deck crew rest areas. The service and cargo cabin interphone switches are located on the overhead panel. With the cargo cabin interphone switch on, the cargo and upper deck interphones are connected to the flight interphone. Access then is the same as access to the flight interphone. Now let's look at the public address or PA system. PA announcements can be made to the upper deck seating area lavatory, and the crew rest areas. Pushing the PA transmitter selector on the audio panel selects all PA areas. Now let's discuss the flight deck call system. The pilot's call panel is located on the aisle stand. An incoming call from an upper deck crew rest area, the main deck cargo area, or the nose wheel well will illuminate the respective switch and sound a chime on the flight deck. Incoming cell call, A cars, ground crew, main deck cargo area, and upper deck crew rest area calls illuminate the respective call indication on the audio panel. A VHF or HF call indication will illuminate when an incoming cell call or A car signal is received. A chime will also sound. A flight deck call indication will illuminate and a chime will sound when the flight deck call switch is pushed in the nose wheel well, upper deck crew rest area, loadmaster amplifier panel, or the wing inspection station on the main cargo deck. To extinguish the call indication and reset the system, 
Push the associated transmitter selector, or, if already selected, push a push-to-talk switch. Pushing the upper deck or crew rest left or right switches on the pilot's call panel sounds a chime and illuminates a call light at the respective location. Pushing the cargo call switch illuminates the flight deck call switches on the loadmaster amplifier panels and wing inspection stations on the main cargo deck. A tone also sounds on the main cargo deck. Pushing the ground call switch sounds a three-second horn in the nose wheel well. Finally, let's look at the cockpit voice recorder. The cockpit voice recorder panel is located on the overhead maintenance panel and the flight deck area microphone is located on the overhead panel. Cockpit voice recorder tape can be erased by pressing the erase button if the airplane is on the ground with the parking brake set.